Okay, uh, so we've got a new seasonal summon. This is the Kalevala seasonal summon. We've got two new three stars, two new four stars, and six new five stars because, of course, we don't have enough five stars, as you all know. So here are the um, the heroes in question. Um, so I'll do a little bit of a review of the five stars. I've got a couple of pulls to do. Um, but I thought it might be interesting, since I looked it up myself, uh, to go and see what Kalevala is and some of the origin behind uh, the choice of this event and a little bit about the characters. So, having just been reading about this on Wikipedia, um, Kalevala is Finnish in origin, um, a work of epic poetry, uh, compiled in the 1800s, um, so it has become, according to this, um, important for Finnish national identity. And Finland, as you know, is the home country of small giant games who developed uh, empires and puzzles. So as such, I assume it's um, reasonably familiar material to uh, a lot of the developers, uh, those who are Finnish. Um, so you can see there, it's essentially it's a creation myth telling stories about the, uh, uh, the carrying on in Kalevala, which is the name of the land in which um, the story is set, but it's essentially it's another name for Finland. Um, and you can see there in that second paragraph on the screen, mention of the Sampo. Um, so it's some kind of an artifact or a talisman. Um, and according to Wikipedia, its precise nature has been the subject of debate to this present day, but that is also appearing um, in the game. Um, and the fact that a lot of the characters in the um, in the background of the game are, you know, reciting poetry, uh, is also quite consistent with the um, the origins of Kalevala being an epic poem. Uh, so according to uh, this page. Kalevala. Kalevala. That is allegedly how you say it. Uh, and the other one that was the other one that was interesting was um, uh, the uh, so the first man in the Kalevala story is this chap. Vainamoinen. Vainamoinen. So that's uh, apparently how we pronounce it. But let's get back to the heroes in game. Uh, so we've got Ilmarinen. Uh, he's a slow firefighter. <laughs> firefighter. <laughs> um, he's got a really interesting special. It'll be absolutely killer in um, in rush attack. Uh, and given those stats you can see he's quite defensively biased a lot more defense a lot more hp um but he's not actually doing a hit um, a damage hit so that's actually fine for his special gives him the survivability but uh reducing mana of all ice enemies by 40 percent so um it certainly discourages bringing ice but he's going to do a mana cover at least 20 percent on everyone and um, that's pretty damaging in a uh, in a rush war uh, obviously not enough to take over the mantle of El Freak, um, his preferred tank, but that's a hell of a good special. Uh, and if he were if he were average speed, he could be um, you know, a contender for the new meta tank, but I think probably going to be too slow. Uh, but read on, he does receive damage for the enemies, but negative 56% for the enemy, defense for the enemies. Um, and you'll find with these Kalevala heroes that they all have this feature, as you can see in the third bullet point there, or second and third, which is they um, they do extra things against their weak colour. So um, all the fire heroes are doing special stuff against ice, um, all the holy heroes are doing special against dark, 
and vice versa. Um, so you'll see that as we as we work through these. Um, let's also talk about the family bonus though. Um, bonus one, two, three heroes, so they can get uh, less damage from the special skills of the stronger element. So how that combines together, um, I don't know. So if you pair your Maranin with Vainamoinen, who is green, um, does that mean that your Maranin gets extra, he gets 25% less damage from Ice Heroes only, and Vainamoinen gets less, 25% less damage from Fire Heroes? That would seem to be a way to read that. Uh, and they all have a passive. Uh, this one has the power of Sisu, so it's a one-time power that when their health gets low, they recover 15% health and receive 15% mana. Um, so that could also be quite a powerful effect on defense. And in fact, in general, I think a lot of these heroes, their specials are reasonably well suited to defense. Um, and that they have these special abilities against the element that, they, that is strong against them. So that's El Maranan. Um, Iku Turso. I do not know how to pronounce that. Um, same passive. What about Druid this time? Fast speed 280% to damage the target and nearbys. Um, that's pretty decent. 800 attack stats, a little more offensively biased so um, this could pair nicely with a number of hit three heroes if you're fortunate enough to have uh, the likes of Evelyn um, and we're doing water damage over three turns and it does um, becomes uncleansable and lasts two turns longer against fire stealing healing um, it's been a, a great effect. It's not um, hasn't been a hugely successful one in the history of Empires and Puzzles, um, but it'll definitely have applications against the right team. Uh, and here is Vainamoinen, uh, depicted with his traditional instrument, and his special is even um, a song of the morass. Uh, his passive, he has the same passive, 270% damage to the target and nearby enemies. This is also at fast speed, so it's a little bit less damage than um, the previous green hero we just saw. Um, but either of them would pair nicely with those um, hit three heroes. Uh, now he is giving all enemies, not just the target and nearby, he's giving all enemies negative 30% accuracy for three turns. Um, so that's a pretty powerful effect, um, can really uh, mess up an opponent and of course if you're on attack with this guy um, you can get the timing of that right and they may not have a cleanse uh, available. And again you can see against fire characters the status effect becomes uncleansable, lasts two turns longer. Um, that's pretty, pretty nasty with that negative accuracy. Uh, Louis. Uh, this is a pretty nasty special. Again, a pretty offensively biased hero. A lot more on the attack stat there. Uh, dispels buffs first from all enemies and then hits them all for 250%. Um, so there's certainly um, there's some heroes which hit uh, with a higher percentage. Um, he's got a pretty good attack stat for no emblems there. Um, so may well do a little bit more damage perhaps than kill here. Uh, but the dispelling of buffs from all enemies first is really, there's a lot of good uses for that. Uh, there are so many um, pretty powerful buffs in the game at the moment. And then he's giving, on top of all that, negative defense. Negative 24% defense for four turns. And he gets holy, lasts two turns longer and is uncleansable. Um, again, he, this guy looks viable on defense, uh, maybe at left flank or left wing, um, he'd be pretty pretty powerful, though being dark, um, not so useful, 
because um, most of the top teams are running dark tanks he's unlikely to get much use because of that but a lot of the mid-tier alliances who aren't necessarily running dark tanks he'd be a really powerful option for a left flank or left wing uh, then we have uh, Kulervo put your shirt on mate uh, reasonably balanced stats there um, if you're familiar with Bjorn that's basically what we've got here Bjorn on steroids 300% uh, damage to the target 470% to a random different enemy so it's also a bit like Zekina uh, but then check this out enemies, the two enemies hit cast mindless attack on a random ally when their mana is full so that's really pretty darn powerful um, and <laughs> against dark characters this effect becomes uncleansable and lasts two turns longer so five turns of mindless attack against two enemies that's really pretty nasty stuff um, so that could work well as a defensive hero as well but at average speed hitting two um, probably won't be featuring in a lot of the top defenses but going to be a hell of a hell of a good hero to take on offense I would think uh, we have Aino Aino, not sure how you pronounce that one um, so we've got another Ice Cleric Healer uh, this one also average speed it's a whole lot of seems, seems to be a whole lot in that class uh, you kind of think of this one like a reverse aerial where she cleanses, recovers 40% health but instead of buffing your mana, she gives all enemies negative 24% mana generation for 4 turns. Uh, and against nature characters, that becomes uncleansable and lasts 2 turns longer. So, um, yep, that's pretty useful hero. Um, and, you know, slightly defensively biased stats, as you would hope for a healer. Um, could have good uses in rush attack as well. Uh, if you've got say uh, an LB uh, in the corner who's giving extra mana generation um, that could be pretty handy there for making sure that that mana generation negative mana generation sticks on him and of course clerics and um, fully emblemed clerics in rush attack are very handy as a way of trying to counteract uh, the mindless attack that we so commonly encounter. Uh, so that is it for the heroes, um, the five star heroes at least. And uh, that was all in terms of the, uh, I'd looked up in terms of the mythology. And I'll do a couple of polls now. Ah, uh, season one. Really terrible Prisca. Wow, I'm getting all the classics here. Yep, a full collection of season one. That is the peril of pools. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. For me, that will do it.